Hello, hello. Welcome back to the show. Today's episode was brought to you by one of those crazy, stupid idea times that the team and I had together. So today I'm actually sharing a value-packed live that I hosted in our private Facebook community that we run for coaches and entrepreneurs. Sometimes the trainings that I do in there are just honestly too good to not share with the rest of the world. So go ahead and give it a listen. And if you're not already part of our free Facebook community, head over to the show notes and request access. Trainings like this are happening in there all the time, not to mention there's networking, coaching, and other juicy tidbits. All right, grab your notebook and enjoy the show. Hello, hello, welcome. It is August 8th, it's the Lion's Gate if you're into that sort of thing. And today I'm jumping on to talk about one of the pieces of launching, maybe one of the most important pieces. So this is one of our weekly trainings that I'm doing, a completely free weekly training, which I'm really excited about to be bringing these to you. And if you have ever launched before, which I'm sure if you're in this group, you may have dabbled with launching, I'd love to know how you currently feel about launching. So just drop some words, like is launching heavy? Is it hard? Is it overwhelming? Is it confusing? Is it easy? Is it light? Is it fun? How does launching feel to you right now? So just give me a little pulse on that. I've got my Facebook here. And I would love to know, because for me personally, I've gone through every emotion during every single launch. And just to give you a reference point, over the last four years, I've done over 50 launches. And that's just in the last four years. And I've been doing digital business launching since 2012. So if we count all of the launches, plus all of the retreats that I had launched and filled and events that I launched and filled, it's like well over 100 launches. And so I am very attuned, (laughs) very used to the roller coaster, the ups and downs of a launch, because quite frankly, they could feel like easy and you're on top of the world one moment and the next moment you're on the floor curled up in a ball crying now that that has ever been me just kidding it has many times um and that that can happen all within one day right not even like through the span of a launch but in the matter of a singular day when you're in launch it could feel like that and so there are things that you can do to set yourself up for an easier, flowier, more effortless feeling launch. And one of the things that I wanna make sure that you are doing as you go into launch, any type of launch, low ticket, high ticket, evergreen, passive, live coaching, it doesn't matter. You could be selling an ebook, an event, uh, you could be selling a physical product. But one of the things that I wanna make sure that you really are focused on is warming your audience up. So I'm sure you've heard of this before. We want to take our audience from cold to warm to hot, right? Or they might be new to you and then they're not really ready yet and then they're ready to buy. So cold to warm to hot. This is a huge miss for a lot of coaches and entrepreneurs. They sort of skip right to the sale. And I am guilty, I have done it before. And when we think about launching, like we think about dating, what that means is people jump right to the proposal. They go right into the like, okay, cool, you came into my world, I'm gonna get down on one knee, I'm gonna pop the question, here's the ring. And the person on the other end is kind of like, wait a minute, hold on, whoa, that was a little bit fast. So if you ever hear in our world, Digital Business Evolution, us talk about dating or dating in the DMs, we're not talking about sliding into somebody's DMs and doing a cold message. We're referencing the whole dating um, as like an overarching theme of nurturing your audience and providing value and building relationships and no like trust and credibility and clout authority, right? All of these things. So when Mike proposed to me many years ago, he got down on one knee and he popped the question and my answer was yes. But my answer was yes before he asked the question. So I didn't say yes because of the the way that he asked or the outfit he was wearing or the content he had put up that day, right? I said yes because of all of the stuff that happened before him asking the question. So for us, it was a couple of years of dating, of creating memories, of building experiences together, of getting to know one another, of finding out that we have similar values, right? All of that stuff happened over the course of years or maybe the course of months. And that is the same thing with your clients or your potential clients online. So what you put out via content or lives or when you're speaking on a stage or a podcast or if you're creating free experiences like masterclasses or maybe you have a book, whatever that might be, that is what it's like dating and then comes the offer or the invitation to work with you. And so there are four things that I want to make sure that you are doing before you actually sell. So number one is, are you doing market research? You want to make sure that you're doing market research for a couple different reasons. Number one, we want to make sure it is a profitable idea. 
Competition is a good thing. Saturation causes innovation. So competition causes innovation. We've got the iPhone and then we've got Samsung, right? Galaxy. Like they, they force each other to level up. They force each other to get better, to innovate. Competition means that there's a demand in the market and that people want the thing that you have. So is it profitable? Are people already doing it? That's a good thing. Walk towards that, right? Thinking about market research, oftentimes we create what we want to create, which is great because we're excited, we're passionate. It's stuff that we know. It's stuff that we've gone through. But market research really is taking the time to find out who is your market already? Who are you already speaking to? The low hanging fruit who's already in your audience. What do those people want and need? What do they know you for? What are, they, what are their pains? What are they struggling with? What are their pleasures or their desired outcomes? Having conversations in market research to make sure that you're not just creating something because you want to, but you're creating something that also is going to be helpful for your audience. It's stuff that they're looking for. Now, do you have to just create what they want? No, absolutely not. Should you only create what you're excited about? No, absolutely not. There's this blurry gray area, a fine line in the middle that you'll learn to kind of like dance between. And it really happens through conversations. Market research is also as simple as looking at your analytics and your insights on the content that you are already putting out. You're gonna see like what is sticking? How do people feel about the things that you say, the things that you think? I'm just refreshing over here. So you wanna make sure with that market research that you're understanding exactly who you're talking to, how you can help them and really diving in. And that goes all the way to reading book reviews on, on Amazon and Yelp. It goes to sending out, literally sending out surveys to people to see what they want, um, putting up questions and having people answer or polls. So market research is across a lot of different areas, not just conversation, but let's not dismiss conversation. So to warm your leads up, we wanna make sure we start with our market research. Then from there, we want to validate. And this is a part that I believe a lot of people miss out on. Lots of entrepreneurs and coaches will actually do the market research, but then they don't validate. So validate means that I'm taking the information that you gave me, the verbiage, the way that you speak, um, what you're asking for, your ideas, your pains and pleasures, not what I think your pains and pleasures are, but what you actually told me are your desired outcomes and all the things that you've tried before and why you're frustrated and really listening to the language that you speak. And then I turn it into content. And so I say, I have this idea that I'm gonna create this thing, let's call this thing um, a masterclass. I wanna create this masterclass or I wanna create this course and it's gonna pinpoint A, B, C. It's gonna talk about X, Y, Z. It's gonna bring you from here to here. Can you help me validate that that's something that you actually want and need? And specifically, can you help me validate that my messaging is spot on. Like, did I nail the messaging? Did I nail the pain and the pleasure? Did I nail the transformation that you're looking for? Based on how you react to my content that I'm putting out to validate this idea, I'll better understand if I need to make little tweaks before I sell anything. So validating is huge. You're helping me validate that, yes, you've got it on lock. You nailed down where I'm struggling with. You've nailed down where I want to go. You totally get me. You understand how I speak and everything that you're saying in your content, your emails, your posts is spot on. Number three is nurturing. And this is a part that I feel everybody does because I feel like this is the part that everybody talks about. So before you sell something, of course, you want to nurture your audience. And what does nurture mean? Well, Nurture means a couple different things in my world. It means providing value, and I believe that all content has value. Some content makes us think differently, it makes us laugh, it's a pattern interrupt, it teaches us something, it's polarizing, um, it teaches us what not to do, right? It shows us what's possible, it inspires, it aspires, it motivates. So all content has value, but with this idea of nurturing and giving value as step three, we wanna spend time, time, which most of us don't want to do because we want to skip ahead. We want to take the, the quick fix, the diet pill, the instant gratification, and that is not how it works. So if you set time aside, if you have patience with this process, nurturing your audience through email, through giving them value, through offering free experiences, free trainings, heck, I'm doing a free training in here right now. And in all of that free and all of that nurturing and all of that value, I'm continuing to add uh, value to you and your transformation, but also show myself as an authority. I'm showing myself as, as credible. I'm showing myself as someone who's not just done it myself, but who's actually helped other people. I've taught other people how to do it and they've been able to do it as well. 
So it's building that know, like, and trust over time. It's creating those relationships because people buy from people. And it's helping me with credibility and clout, right? It's also just really fun. And the more you nurture your audience, if you are a very good listener and you remove your ego, they're actually going to give you feedback as well. So this idea of nurturing, which is step three, kind of circles back to step one, which was market research, because the more I give you, the more you tell me that you like it, you don't like it, it's helpful, it's not helpful, you want something else, you need something more, right? So it's this like cool loop of I'm giving you and you're actually giving back, which is really, really cool. And then step four, which a lot of people I feel also sometimes do, and they do really well, is teasing. So we've done the market research, we've validated that our idea, our offer, our tra- the transformation, the verbiage, we've validated all of that. Then we go into just continuing to nurture and give value, which is the majority of our business anyway. Like you're never not launching, you're always doing these things. And number four is teasing. And so at this point, you're now teasing the thing that you're gonna be doing. You're showing the behind the scenes, you're getting your audience enrolled in the vision, you're creating kind of FOMO and hype and urgency without even selling anything. Perfect example of this is if you are putting together a new offer, I love when we do this with our clients, we have them invite the audience along for the journey of creating the offer. So for example, if you were creating a landing page where people would purchase something, or you're creating a logo, or you're picking colors for something, you actually want to bring your audience along for the journey and you're gonna let them vote. So you can let them vote if you think this can should be pink and white, or if you should, if you like the can better blue and white, and you could put up the two options and you let them vote. This is getting them enrolled and becoming part of the journey. Now, is it a sure bet that they're gonna buy in the future? No. Does it mean that you have to go with what they vote for? No, but what it means is you're teasing them along the way. And so when you finally do come out with the thing and you say it's here, the chances of them even looking at the thing increase drastically because they're interested purely on seeing which did she go with? Which one did he go with, the pink or the blue? right? Because they were part of the journey and humans love to give insight and opinion and we love to get involved. And so purely out of the psychology of interest, they're going to check back and see what color did they end up going with? I'm interested to see. I'm enrolled in the vision. I was part of building it, right? It empowers them. So teasing is not just saying, I'm putting something out next week. You know, the team and I are working on something. I'm building something behind the scenes. That's a part of it. But teasing is also saying, Come with me on this journey. Help me build this thing for you. And if they buy, cool. If they don't buy, it doesn't matter. You're not, you're not teasing them so that they buy. You're teasing them to build that community. So quick little recap to make sure that you are warming your audience up before you sell because the worst thing that you can do is just one day wake up and go, boom, I have something for sale. And people were like, what? I didn't even know you were a nutrition coach. Like, huh? You have an Instagram account? wait a minute, hold on, you do what, right? So the worst thing that we can do is just appear out of nowhere. Think about this, think about this. I'm gonna go with iPhone again because I used it before. If you had never seen an iPhone, it was the first time they came out with an iPhone, you didn't know anything about it, no one had it, like zero proof, zero proof. And Apple, which at the time really was known for like Apple 2GS computers, right? Back in the 80s and 90s, I had one of those. Who had an Apple 2GS Say me if you have an Apple 2GS. And I think at the time, gosh, in the early 2000s, they had those big bubbly apples, the desktops that had like clear colors. Like it was like a purple or like a teal back to the computer. Anyway, if they came out randomly and out of nowhere, they were like, I know we're known for computers and we do all these things with the computers, but like, guess what? We have a phone. Uh, You should buy it. And yeah, like we just made it yesterday. Do you trust us? Do you want to buy it? Even if people trusted the brand and liked the brand, people would be a little bit hesitant. Like, you just created that thing yesterday? Does it even work? What are the features? Does it have a bug? I don't know. I always heard with technology, like, you should wait until the second or third iteration so that they can work all the kinks out on the first one. I'm not really interested in buying it, right? A lot of us are doing that. We're not warming up our audiences. We are excited because behind the scenes, we are working on all of this stuff for weeks, for months, for years at a time. But then... We just jump on and we're like, hey, do you want to buy my thing? And they're like, what are you talking about? So 
these four steps that I'm talking about in warming up your audience goes so much deeper than building no like and trust, than building that credibility and clout. It really is the whole journey of showing people what you do, right? Okay, so number one was market research. Find out exactly what they want, where they're at, and most importantly, what is their language so that you can help them. Make sure they want what you have. What are they using already? What have they tried already? Number two is then validating that you understood what they said. Because brain is funny. The human brain is funny. A lot of times we take what we hear and then have you ever had a conversation with someone where you regurgitate what they say and they're like, that's not what I said. You're like, what? That's what I heard. My kids are really good at doing this, right? <laughs> Selective hearing. So make sure when you are regurgitating what you heard them say, that your language is spot on, that those pain points, those pleasure points, your understanding for where they're at and where they want to go has nailed it. Okay, so one is market research, two is validate, three is nurturing and giving value and building those relationships without attachment to the outcome. We give not to get, we serve, right? We serve, we don't sell. We give not to get, we just serve. We show up with purpose, not for popularity. These are very different things. So if you can be detached from the outcome and understand that all content has value, like broccoli has nutrients and minerals and vitamins and fiber, cookies are really good. They're comfort food and they're delicious. They're both valuable, but on different days for different reasons. Don't argue with me with that. Cookies are good, right? Cookies are good. Chocolate chip over oatmeal. But that's an opinion. <laughs> All content is value. So show up and give value in your content, in your emails, in your podcast episodes, when you're speaking, in the DMs, when you're having conversations with people, provide value for that person. Nurture those relationships. Nurture, understand that it takes time. And then the fourth part, before you go selling, now tease them. Get them enrolled in the vision. Get them to be a part of the journey. Get them to have buy-in. They will create their own FOMO. They will create their own hype. They will create their own urgency. And most importantly, they will create your community. Now, once you've done all four of those steps, you could potentially have moved someone from cold, brand new, they didn't know you, to warmer. Mm -hmm, okay, I like this. I like what she's got. I like what he's got. This makes sense. I trust this person. To eventually, it might not be right then and there, but to eventually to hot. And a hot person will oftentimes become a buyer. Understand this is the customer journey and it takes time. This is not an overnight thing. This is definitely not an overnight thing. So this is where we say play the long game. Short-term thinking will be short-term results. That's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in teaching you how to build a business machine, which is long-term thinking, always planting seeds. You want to be the person that that person thinks of when they are ready to take action. When they finally throw up their hands and say, you know what, I need help. I can't do it anymore. Boom, you pop into mind. Why do you pop into mind? Because you've created no like trust, because you've built relationships with them, because you treated them as a person and not a number, because you've been listening intently to what they have to say. You've been listening to what they're asking for. You're providing value and not asking them for money. You're showing up and giving to them without an attachment to getting anything from them. So yeah, when they're ready, you're the first person that they think of. And that my friend, is how you warm up your audience. So let me know if you're excited. Let me know if you have questions. And then if you loved this, of course, share it because this is a free community where we are offering trainings for free every week. So why not get your friends in here? If you have friends that are wanting to start an online business or build and scale an online business, please, please, please invite them into this group. It is totally for free, no strings attached. If, you, if you've been here, you know that. And we just are showing up and providing value. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you loved this episode, I invite you to be a part of our ripple effect and share it with a friend. And please, if you feel called, take 30 seconds to leave a five-star review and I'll be forever grateful. Until next time, cheers to your evolution.